Standard & Poor's recently upgraded Jamaica's credit rating, but what's in it for me? I'm Kalila Reynolds, and I'm here to explain. Now, this program is brought to you in partnership with the Ministry of Finance. First, let's review. What are credit ratings? A credit rating is an estimate of a person or a company's, or in this case a country's, ability to fulfill their financial commitments, such as paying back a loan. Institutions will assess your credit worthiness based on the things you've done in the past. Did you pay your bills on time? Do you pay your credit card off in full every month? Do you have a stable job and a steady income? If you're applying for, say, a mortgage or a car loan, these are the things that a bank will look at in deciding whether to give you the loan. That's why you hear most startup businesses complain that they can't get a loan, because if you're a startup, you don't have any credit history. So banks aren't going to take that risk since they don't know how likely you are to pay back the loan. Same if you've just barely started working, you got your first job, you don't have any bills in your name, it's going to be a lot more difficult. For a country like Jamaica now, we have 50 odd years of history and most of our credit history in that period hasn't been so great. We've borrowed more than we can afford to pay back and ended up needing bailouts on several occasions from institutions like the IMF. Now, who is Standard & Poor's, and why are they such a big deal? Standard & Poor's, or S&P, is one of the big three credit ratings agencies in the world. The other two are Moody's and Fitch. They're based in Lower Manhattan, New York City, near Wall Street. So they issue credit ratings not only on countries, but also on large companies and individual instruments as well, such as bonds. Remember, I explained the concept of a bond a few weeks ago in Money Mondays. Bonds are simply a different type of loan. If you buy a company or a country's bond, you're lending them money at a particular interest rate for a specific period. So you can see why a credit ratings agency like S&P would rate a bond. The rating will tell you how likely the company or the country issuing the bond is to repay you. And S&P ratings come with a lot of credibility, so it's very good news for Jamaica that they've upgraded the country's credit rating. Now, there's several different categories of ratings. S&P assesses different things about the country. They look at our currency, they look at our short-term risk, our long-term risk, and many other things. And they have a scale that they use to measure it. Unfortunately, it's not a simple scale like from 1 to 10. For their long-term ratings, AAA, top of top. Canada, Australia, and a couple of European countries have AAA ratings. That's the highest credit rating from Standard & Poor's. Moody's & Fitch have their own systems that use a combination of letters and numbers. Now, after AAA, you have AA+, plus, then AA, then AA-, minus, then you have A+, plus, A, and A-. minus. In the Caribbean, I think only Cayman is in the A range. Under A, you have the triple Bs, which are still classified by S&P as investment grade. It means you have adequate capacity to meet your financial commitments, but bad economic conditions or changing circumstances could affect that. Then you move into what they classify as non-investment grade or speculative grade. So these are the riskier investments. At the top of the speculative grade are the double Bs, and Jamaica actually has one rating in the double Bs. S&P just upgraded Jamaica's transfer and convertibility rating to double B minus. Now transfer and convertibility rating has to do with our currency. This rating measures the risk that a country would impede the ability to convert local currency like Jamaican dollars into a foreign currency like US dollars and transfer those funds to a creditor overseas. So this rating by S&P supports what the Bank of Jamaica and the government have been saying that our foreign reserves are pretty strong. This being our best rating of the bunch, Standard & Poor's is saying there's less risk than before with our currency. Investors are less likely than before to face challenges converting their money to U.S. dollars if they needed to. And that's a big vote of confidence in Jamaica's foreign exchange market, where we've been seeing this two-way movement of the Jamaican dollar over the past few years, rather than the one-way movement that we've become used to. Beneath the double Bs, you have the Bs, and this is where Jamaica's other S&P currency ratings are now. 
The long-term foreign and local currency rating was just upgraded to a B plus from a B. And the short-term foreign and local currency sovereign rating remains the same, still at B. B means that the country currently has the capacity to meet its obligations, but adverse business, financial, or economic conditions would likely impair that capacity. And that's fair enough, given that we're just coming out of a standby arrangement with the IMF, and the standby arrangement was pretty much premised on the very same thing, that we can meet our debt obligations, but just in case something went wrong, we would be in trouble and the IMF was standing by. Meanwhile, S&P says the outlook for Jamaica remains stable. And stable means that the rating is not likely to change. Under B, you have triple C, then double C, then C. And then under that, you have R, which means you're under regulatory supervision. After R, you have SD, which stands for selective default, meaning you've defaulted on some of your obligations. You haven't paid them back. And then the worst rating is D, which stands for default, which means you've, uh, you've pretty much defaulted on everything. And then NR simply means not rated. Now, I want you to take a look at this chart compiled by the website Trading Economics, which is a resource that I use often. Lots of great statistics uh, over there over a long period of time. And this particular chart shows Jamaica's history of credit ratings from the big three dating back 20 years to 1998. And you'll see that B plus with a stable outlook where we are now is the strongest we've ever been during that time. Look how far we've come, climbing all the way back from almost the bottom of the barrel, selective default in February 2013, moving up to the triple C's, then B minus, then B, and now B plus. The last time we were at B plus stable was 2001. That's 18 years ago, and that didn't last. We'd been climbing steadily for the previous three years, then we peaked at B plus stable, and it was downhill from there, hitting the triple C's before that selective default in 2010, which was the year we entered a standby arrangement with the IMF under the Golding administration. And then we started climbing moderately, only to hit SD again in 2013. But since then, over the past six years, it's been steady and consistent improvements, the longest period of consistent improvement on this chart. So yeah, this is a big deal. The fact that we have our strongest credit ratings in 18 years, that's something to toast. It means we can have easier access to credit and on better terms. We don't have to accept super high interest rates anymore. We can swap out some of our high interest loans for lower interest loans, which is what the government recently did. An investment grade is in sight from double B. It's just one jump across the border to triple B. And then dare we dream of A? Now, I don't think I need to explain what's in it for me then, as I went over that in the last two episodes, what the government's debt refinancing means and what lower debt means for all of us. I hope you are able to understand more about credit ratings today and why they are important. I'm Khalila Reynolds. This program was brought to you in partnership with the Ministry of Finance. Thanks for watching. Until next time.